Hey everybody, it's David at Euro Motorcycles. Uh, hey, I realize I've been missing in action for a while. Uh, compared to all the videos I was putting out at the beginning of the COVID thing, uh, had a little bit more time back then, but uh, as winter approached, uh, we got into the, uh, you may have seen the videos where I interviewed my boss, Ilya. That took a little bit of time to put together and get those out. Uh, if you haven't watched them, I encourage you to go watch them. It's really enlightening uh, as to uh, what the company has been through and how far him and Medina um, have struggled to bring the company to where it is now. Um, and then um, I had to build a geo so the marketing department could make their, uh, their cool uh, commercial that they did, which is also on YouTube. If you haven't seen that, I encourage you to check that out. It's, it's pretty good. Uh, we, we don't... It's, kind of a first for us to get into a commercial of that level. Um, and then I had to go back to creating instructional uh, materials for dealers that are coming on, new dealers, uh, new service centers, things like that. So what I did was I kept my action cameras uh, with me in hand as I was creating those uh, uh, instructional documents and I actually filmed it. So uh, what I thought I'd do is I'd, I'd make this little intro and even though I had it made, haven't made a video for you guys specifically uh, in a while, I thought maybe you might uh, like to see what's involved in getting to uh, the flexible U-joint coupling, which was the direct uh, instructions I was doing for the dealers. So uh, it's not uh, like my normal videos. It's actually just me working with a little bit of a voiceover. But um, it's also good for you guys to see. So if you ever have this work done, say by a dealer or a service center, which we always encourage you to do, um, and you get hit with the, um, the bill and you're like, why so many hours of labor? Well, you'll see exactly why, because it's, it's quite a task to get into that little, uh, rubber donut. So now I, I do want to say too, at the newer bikes, uh, with our new supplier, uh, new rubber compound of that flexible U-joint coupling. We really don't get a lot of warranty uh, repairs required for this item. Very rarely do they rip or tear like they used to. Um, I still had to make the instructions for uh, dealers that you know might encounter an older bike or for whatever reason. Um, anyway, follow along if you want to and I promise I will get back on the other videos as time permits. I know I owe you a spare tire to front tire replacement video, I owe you a uh, fuel injection tuning video, I owe you a whole bunch of stuff. I still have the list from when we were going strong during the summertime. Uh, and I will get back on a video schedule as soon as I can. We just got to get through the, the uh, had to get through the end of the year and the first part of the uh, 2021 here with uh, marketing and everything else. I kind of got my hands on a lot of things around here. Um, with tech and warranty and marketing and then putting the bikes together like the Geo, uh, which was really fun. And uh, anyway, I will get back to that. Uh, I haven't forgotten about you and uh, I'll talk to you next time and happy riding. Start by placing the bike on the center stand. Using a 13 millimeter wrench, loosen the bolt on the left side of the swing arm that holds the reaction link. Using a 17 millimeter socket, loosen the two, two bolts on the rear brake caliper bracket. Using a 13 millimeter wrench, loosen the two bolts that hold the coupling to the final drive that goes to the sidecar drive shaft. If need be, rotate the sidecar tire to access the rear axle nut. Using a 22 millimeter wrench, remove the rear axle nut.
use a 12 millimeter and 13 millimeter wrench and remove the rod that activates the two wheel drive from the final drive. Use a 17 millimeter socket and wrench and loosen the pinch bolt on the rear swing arm. Use a tool to remove the axle. Now you can remove the two, seven, the two bolts that hold the brake caliper to the reaction link and place the whole rear brake caliper assembly to the side. The reaction link that you loosened earlier should swing away. Now you're free to remove the rear wheel assembly. I like to take the drive shaft and zip tie it up to the frame so it's out of my work area. Depending on the year, you'll have a variety of different breather options. This one is the requires a 10 millimeter wrench to remove, or on earlier models, you may have had this version, which requires a 14 millimeter wrench to remove. Remove whatever is applicable for your bike. And then using a 17 millimeter socket, you can remove the four nuts that hold the final drive to the rear swing arm. Pull back the rubber boot on the main drive shaft and remove the final drive. Using a 17 millimeter wrench and socket, remove the lower shock bolts. Now on this bike, we have a two into one high pipe, so I cannot remove the bolt on the right side as it interferes with the exhaust. I prefer to remove the shocks completely. This can be done at the upper shock mount point with a five millimeter Allen wrench. I like to remove them completely to get them out of my work area. I also remove the top hardware on the right side shock and remove it from its mount to help slide the swing arm back. Remove the cables and brake line from their mounting clip and remove the two clamps that secure it to the swing arm. You'll have to remove the clip on the swing arm using a four millimeter Allen. Now you can remove the swing arm pivot bolts our bike here uses a 10 millimeter Allen wrench. Earlier bikes could have had a 19 millimeter bolt with a spring lock tab washer underneath the bolt head. Once the bolts are removed, you can pry the swing arm back. And now you can access the lower bolt on the right side shock. Bikes equipped with the two and a two low pipes. This step is not necessary as you can remove both shocks at the same time. Now you can use a pry bar or another tool to pry the flexible coupling from the drive shaft and remove the flexible coupling. Furthermore, if you want to remove the drive shaft completely, you can remove the protective rubber cap, lift the inner mud flap, pull the swing arm back further, and cant it to the side, and the drive shaft can be removed completely from the side of the bike.
To reinstall the flexible U-joint coupling, make sure that the swedged part or the smaller diameter portion of the coupling is facing forward. I like to use a little lubricant to get the coupling started. Then I use a block of wood and a rubber mallet to seat it onto the back of the gearbox. Reinstall your drive shaft and move the rear swing arm back into place. Be sure that the drive shaft clears the motorcycle frame and is in line with the coupling. Make sure your linkage is out of the way so it doesn't get trapped. You can now put the right side shock back in place and put the bolt in before you slide the swing arm forward, at which point you wouldn't be able to get that bolt in. Now again, on two and a two low pipes, this is not necessary as you already have clearance. I use my rubber mallet to get the drive shaft started into the coupling. And then I can move the swing arm the rest of the way forward and get the swing arm pivot bolts started. started I tighten them up using my 10 millimeter Allen socket and then I torque them to 65 foot-pounds. I replace the clip that guides the parking brake cable and the rear brake line and the two clamps that secure them I use a Phillips head screwdriver and put them back on the swing arm. I now put on the left side shock including the lower mounting bolt Tighten the upper hardware with my five millimeter Allen socket and the lower hardware with a 17 millimeter wrench and socket. Place the rubber boot onto the main drive shaft. Lube the drive shaft splines. Rotate the coupler so you can phase the drive shaft with the rear yoke so they are both phased in the same direction. Put the final drive back into position on the rear swing arm. Make sure that your linkage is out of the way and doesn't get bound up. Replace the mounting nuts on the swing arm and using a 17 millimeter socket, tighten up all four nuts on the final drive. The final drive to swing arm mounting nuts should be torqued to 25.8 foot pounds. So I torque them to 26. I just round it up. Replace your two wheel drive engagement linkage rod and tighten with a 12 millimeter and 13 millimeter wrench. Depending on what year of bike you have, replace the breather into the case. Lubricate the drive splines on the final drive and on the wheel itself, and then you can.
can reinstall the rear wheel assembly. Now you can replace the brake caliper and bracket. Move the reaction link up into place and start the bolts that hold the re reaction link to the rear brake caliper. Lube up the rear axle and put it in position on the rear swing arm through the hub and through the final drive. You'll notice my boss is making sure I'm doing it right. Now I place the sidecar drive shaft coupling onto the final drive. You may need to rotate the ring to get everything to align. And then you can reinstall the bolts that hold the coupling to the final drive. Also install the nut and washer for the rear axle. Using a 13 millimeter wrench, tighten up the bolts on the coupling. And then with a tool placed into the hole on the axle on the left side, you can use your 22 millimeter wrench to tighten up the rear axle nut on the opposite side. Once the axle is snugged up, then you can use your 17 millimeter socket and wrench to tighten the pinch bolt. Then a 17 millimeter socket to tighten up the brake bracket bolts and a 13 millimeter wrench to tighten up your front bolt on the reaction link. Lower the bike off the center stand and you are done.